Hi, so I wanted to do an example of creating a Turing machine from scratch for a particular language. Generating Turing machines is actually quite difficult because it's hard to reason about its behavior if you don't know exactly what you're doing. And I wanted to give you some insight on how I approach problems like this. So the problem that we're gonna be looking at here is creating a Turing machine for this language, which is the canonical non-context-free language, A to the N, B to the N, C to the N whereas it leaves zero. And I wanted to solve this problem from scratch. I don't have anything prepared at all. I haven't solved this problem in a long time and there's gonna be no edits to this video. So you're gonna see me live solve this problem, so to speak. So the way to think about solving a Turing machine problem is think about what the tape looks like. So let's imagine an example of what the tape could look like. And there are many different models of what the Turing machine can do. So the way that I'm going to assume is that there is some special character I'm going to call dollar sign written on the tape. And that's where we are at the very beginning of the machine's computation. If that's not true, if there's not such a character here, then what we need to do is to shift the input over. And there are many ways of actually doing that. But let's just assume that that's there. The reason for that is that and when we're gonna be moving across the tape, we need some way of saying, okay, here's the thing at the very beginning. And actually for this problem, there is a way of ignoring that, um, but I'm not gonna look at that here. So let's just say that we have, let's say three A's, three B's, and three C's. Oh, that's another thing for Turing machines. The way to solve Turing machine problems is to think about solving the problem in a direct way, in the sense that Assume that the input presented on the tape is correct and only make transitions for the correct things. So if you see something that is not valid at all, don't make a transition for it because if you leave out a transition, then that means that um, essentially you can just ignore it because if the transition is not defined, the machine will reject immediately at that point if it needed to take that missing transition. But So let's assume that we have a correct input right here. So it is in this language. And of course, on a Turing machine, there are blanks after the fact. So then what can we do? Well, we gotta ensure that the number of these, the number of A's is the same as the number of C's, ain't sorry, the number of B's and the number of C's, the exactly the same number because that's what the language is saying. So there really is only one way to determine whether the count of something is equal to the count of another one minus maybe some small modification is to put, to change some of these characters to other characters. So let's just say I change this, this first A into an X. So I move the tape head uh, to this cell, I change it to an X, and let's say I've moved right, and so I'm not at that cell right now. So at this point, we change this A into an X, and then at that point, we have marked one A, which means that if the counts are the same, we should be able to mark one B and then mark one C after the fact. So if we're able to mark those, mark one of each, we go all the way back to the beginning and then mark one of each. So essentially we're doing a zigzag pattern going across over and over and over. There are many other ways you could have approached this, but this is the way that I'm gonna approach it here. Okay, so uh, let's carry this out though. So here we're at this position on the tape. So we're gonna, we, only, we already marked one of the A's, so let's skip the rest of them. And then we haven't marked, we'll find the first unmarked B, which is right here, which I'm gonna mark right here. Marking just means I'm gonna change it to some character. Let's say I change it to an X. Uh, you could use a different character there. You don't have to use the same one. But here I'm gonna do the same, same character. So then I find the first unmarked C, I mark it, which is of course means changing it to an X. And then once I said, okay, I am able to find a C, therefore I'm going to uh, scan back across all of the X's that might be over here, across all the B's that might be right here, across any X's that are right here, across any A's that are right here, and then I stop, let's say, at this X, although we don't have to, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move right one position and then start the procedure again. So then I mark this A, so this one will become marked, so this is an X now. So then scan right past any other A's that there might be, 
um, scan across any of the X's that might be here, and then mark the first unmarked B, which is right here. So I mark that. And then go and find the first unmarked C, which is right here. And then we just keep zigzagging back and forth. So let's say we did this final iteration. So we marked uh, this, this last A right here. We marked this last B right here. And now we're on the way to mark the C. So then what we can do is say, uh, so we mark the C right here. We're going to start scanning left. We don't find any C's, B's, or A's. Let's, and let's say we stop right here. Then what we can then do to verify that we marked everything correctly is if we scan right over and over and over and over past X's and never hit anything else, and we hit the blank symbol right here, well, since we never wrote a blank anywhere else, if we hit a blank when scanning right in this situation, that means that we have marked everything correctly and then therefore we can accept. So let's use this idea to solve this problem. So actually, I'm going to leave the tape up. So I'm going to have the start state right here. So the start state, I don't have to actually name the state, but um, other than the halt states. But So here, uh, we're in this cell right here in this model. So note that if you're going to be working with a different Turing machine model, you're not going to be like this, and then you're going to have to adapt accordingly. Notably, if you don't have a dollar sign right here, then one way to solve this problem let's say the A's were right here, is to have the first A be a blank symbol or some, or, or actually just mark it as the dollar sign and then just scan until you hit the dollar sign. That's an equivalent way to solve it. But here, let's just say we've permanently uh, have this uh, dollar sign here. Although I could change it, but I'm not going to here. So I'm going to look at the dollar sign and skip right past it. So now I'm gonna be looking at the A's. So at this point, I'm gonna call this state loop. Again, none of this is prepared. I'm, I'm doing this from scratch. But I'm calling this loop because at this point, I'm going to be at the first unmarked A. So at this point right here, we're at the first unmarked A. So here, I'm going to actually mark one of the A's. So here, I'm going to have A. I'm going to mark it with an X right here and, and move right. And then let's see. So let, let's look at, at this situation right here. So at this situation, we, we mark this thing. There could be some more A's, and we don't, and we have nothing else marked in this situation, um, potentially. So then here, we could have some A's. So I'm just going to skip past any of the A's that there might be. Just skip past them. So then at this point, what I want to do is I want to find the first unmarked B. So... At the very beginning, of course, there could be some X's, so like something like this. There could be some X's right here. So therefore, what I want to do is to skip past any of those that there might be also. So I'm going to skip past any X's that are right here. There is a way to handle that, um, so you don't have both of these on the same self loop, but I'm going to have them both here. So at this point, that it's going to skip past this state's going to skip past the A's, the X's. And so the first thing we should see, although we could in principle see other things, the first thing we should see is a B. So if we see a B at this point, I'm going to mark it with an X, exactly the same way we did right here. So this thing, look, in order for this to make sense, there has to be two here. So we mark this thing as a B, uh, sorry, as an X right now. And so therefore we have the same situation of, with Bs and Cs that we had with As and Bs before. So at this point, there could be some more Bs left that I just need to skip past. So just skip past all of the Bs that there might be. And then there could be some, in this case there will be one, so there could be some Xs right here that denote the things that were marked in the C region. So let's skip past those. And then what I should see is a C. So then if I'm right here, that means I'm going to mark it then at this point, I don't need to search any further because I might need to do another iteration or I don't need to search further right, I meant. So therefore, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go left. So I'm going to mark this thing with an X and move left. So then at this point, we need to go all the way back over here. So I'm going to make a, a state called go back. Beatles will love that one. <laughs> so go back. So... The things that I can see along the way are X's, 
uh, I can't see C's, um, B's and A's. So I need to skip past any A's that there might be, any X's that there might be, and any B's that there might be. That's a funny sentence. So I'm going to have an X, I'm going to skip past it going left. Any B's, I skip past it going left. And any A's, I skip past them going left. And then if I see the dollar sign, I'm going to, uh, I, I need to go past that dollar sign to find the first unmarked A because that's what this state is expecting. Although there's another way you could have done it. So here what I'm going to do is go to a state right here. So this transition is going to have um, dollar sign goes to right. I don't want to change that because that's my stopping point, if you will. So I'm going to... Uh, so I'm going to go past the dollar sign, so I'm right here in this state. So then what I'm going to do is, actually no, I'm, I'm going to do this. So I'm going to go directly to that state and then skip past any X's that there might be in this state. So here, this R is going to go to the very first A that there was originally, but it could have been X after some iterations around. So therefore, it's going to be, let's say, an X. So therefore, I'm going to skip past them, and then eventually I might hit an A. Well, if let's just say we don't hit an A. If we don't hit an A, um, the only thing that we really care about for accepting is if we hit the blank at the very end. Note that if we hit a B, I don't care, because I, those transitions that are not written are going to go to the reject state. So what I'm going to do is, if I see a blank symbol... I'm just going to go right, there's no reason to go left here, and then go to the accept state. And I don't need to do anything else. So the thing to note with Turing machines is let's consider if we have the empty input. So if we have a non-empty input, it's pretty clear that this does the right thing unless I made a small mistake. But let's consider the, the empty input. Well, if we have empty input in this model, we have a dollar sign right here and a blank symbol right here. So let's consider what happens. So Q0, we see the dollar sign, we move right, we go to the first cell, which is a blank, and therefore we go down here. And we should accept it because N is at least zero here. So if N is zero, that's the empty string, which is exactly what we want. And if we have a non, if we have N bigger than zero, so that means that there is some A, some A, B, some C, then that means that uh, we will take this transition and then we'll go around the loop as we were discussing earlier. And if the counts aren't correct, then at some point, uh, one of these is going to be the minimum, whichever one it is. Let's say that A is the smallest of the two, so which it shouldn't be accepted. So if we have, let's do a short example. So if I have, uh, let's say, one A and two Bs and two Cs, then that means that I'm going to mark this A, mark this B, mark this C, go back. Then I'm going to hit the dollar sign, try to scan right, e looking for either an A, an X, or a blank symbol. Well, the X's I just skip over. I can't find an A because there isn't any, and I don't hit the blank before I hit something else, so the machine will reject. If we have a fewer number of B's, then at some point we're going to exhaust the, that uh, that whole section, and there's going to be some A's left, which means that uh, I'm going to mark one of the A's and not be able to mark a B. So we're going to get stuck in this transition, or we can be stuck in this one if the C's are the minimum. So therefore, this machine, unless I made a very tiny mistake, is a Turing machine for this particular language. So hopefully this gives you some insight into how I solve Turing machine problems. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave thoughts about Turing machines in the comments down below. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. That was easy. That was easy. That was easy.